In a previous video linked in the description below, I explained what effects are in the context of Haskell and why Haskell's structures for dealing with effects are really cool and distinguish it from other languages. Essentially, Haskell's type system allows us to set apart certain areas of our code that can use particular effects from other areas that cannot use these effects. A function within a particular monad can use the effects associated with that monad, otherwise it cannot use these effects. And we can validate all of this at compile time. But there seems to be a problem with this. So many of the different effects we might use in Haskell all fall under the umbrella of the same monad, and this is the IO monad. This can include things like printing to the terminal, reading from the file system, using threads and concurrency, making a network connection and making an HTTP request, or even just generating a fresh random number. Now, I'm not gonna tell you to just rewrite your program without using any of these really essential uh, activities. It might not be possible to even rewrite your program in such a way that these activities are limited to a particular section of the program. But we have this problem where the IO monad is essentially unlimited in its abilities. So if every part of your program has access to the IO monad, then we don't really have any of the guarantees about limiting side effects that we would like to have. And so it seems like if we're going to have any IO in part of our code, then we have to allow all kinds of IO. But this doesn't have to be the case. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can get limited IO effects within a particular function. That is, we'll write our type signature in such a way that we allow a couple of specific IO actions without opening the door to all kinds of craziness. Let's see how this works. Throughout this video, we're going to be using this nim game example that I made. It's a simple command line game where players are adding numbers to a growing sum and want to be the one to make it exactly 100. But there are some restrictions. You can't add more than 10, or you can't subtract by using a negative number, or you can't add too much that would put it over 100. So if we try to do some of these actions, we'll get some helpful error messages. And then when someone finally wins, we see who that is. Now, there's not a whole lot of code to this game. There are just a handful of functions, and they mostly live in this game monad we created. The game monad keeps track of the game state using the state monad and then it also uses the IO monad below that, which we need to receive user input and print all those messages we were seeing. We have a couple instances, monad state and monad IO for our game monad to make our code a bit simpler. Now, the drawback here, as we talked about before, is that all these game monad functions can do arbitrary IO. We just do lift IO, and suddenly we can go ahead and read a random file if we want. But we can change this with just a few lines of code. We'll start by creating our own type class. This class will be called monad terminal. It will have two functions for interacting with the terminal. First, log message. This will take a string and it will return nothing. And then there's get input line, and this will return a string. How do we use this class? Well, we have to make a concrete instance for it. So let's make an instance for our game monad. This will just use lift.io, and it will run normal IO actions like put string line and get line. At this point, we can get rid of this old log message function, since the type class uses that name now. Next, let's think about this get input expression. It uses lift.io and get line right now. But this is exactly the same definition we used in monad terminal. So let's just replace this with the get input line class function. 
Now let's observe that this function no longer needs to be in the game monad. We can instead use any monad m that satisfies the monad terminal constraint. Since the game monad does this already, there's no effect on our code. Now we can do the same thing with the other two functions. They call log message and get input line, so they require monad terminal. They call get and put on the game state, so they also need the monad state constraint. But after doing that, we can remove game monad from the type signature. And now these functions can no longer use arbitrary I.O. They're still using the true I.O. effects we wrote above, but since monad I.O. and in fact game monad aren't in the type signature, we can't just call lift I.O. and read from a file here. Of course, the game monad still has I.O. on its monad stack. That's the only way we can make a concrete implementation that actually does I.O. But the functions that run our game's logic don't necessarily use the game monad anymore. They can use any monad that satisfies the two constraints we gave them. And it would be possible to write instances of these classes that don't use I.O. at all. Therefore, these functions can no longer use arbitrary I.O. functionality. This has a few implications, but the main thing we want to focus on is that we can have a lot more confidence in the limitations of these functions' abilities, which, as a reminder, this is considered a good thing in Haskell. Another uh, good effect of this is that testing these functions is a lot easier. Hopefully, you think this idea is at least a little bit cool, uh, but if you think, whoa, this is a totally game-changing idea, I really want to learn more about this, more about effects, well, in that case, I have an offer for you. If you follow the first link in the video description, you will learn about our Effectful Haskell course. This course will give you hands-on experience with the ideas in this video by working on a small but multifunctional uh, web application. The course starts with learning about the different layers of Haskell's effect structures, and it ends with launching this application on the internet. It's really cool, and if you've watched uh, the video for this long, I think you'll enjoy it. So uh, definitely take a look at that. Uh, as a special bonus, if you subscribe to the Monday Morning Haskell newsletter, there's another link for that in the description. You'll get a discount code for 20% off of that and all of our other courses. So definitely take a look. And thanks for watching.